Hi guys, it's all about their BF and today I will be doing a makeup tutorial for you guys. Um, I'm going to call it more like a soft um, shimmer re orangey look. I don't really have a name for it, you'll have to excuse me for that. Um, but we might as well just get straight away cracking on, cracking on with the video. Um, in Just a disclaimer, in no way, shape or form am I a professional makeup artist. I just do makeup from the heart, from the inside. Some people are gonna take that as a way to make fun of me, but who gives who gives to his own it's life, you know? But you might as well get cracking on with the video. So let's get started. Um, so first of all, we have to start with a primer. And what primer is better than um the benefit professional because you always need a good pore filling primer. So I'm just going to get some of that on my fingers. And I'll be the benefit professional primer. You have to excuse me, one's a little dusty. So first of all, I'm going to grab some on my fingers. I'm going to use these finger, this finger here. I call it the swearing finger or the index finger, I guess you could call it. Now rub between the two index fingers, that is. And I just uh, apply lightly to my T-zone areas and it's really um, applicable so I just like dust it in all in my spotty areas because we don't want no we don't want no you know pores up in here the next thing I'm taking is um, just this W7 Prime Magic Camera Ready Face Primer again put it in between my index fingers and rubbing it between the two index fingers and applying this to my cheeks and the places where I've not applied the benefit the benefit primer and also um, also um, also I forgot to add that I've already moisturised before this with the number 7 Lift and Illuminate Day Cream with SPF 15. Now let's move on to the foundation. Now we're moving on to foundation. Now the foundation I've been loving recently is a combo. Um, so I will show you obviously this foundation as I apply it first and then I will show you the next foundation as I apply it afterwards. So this foundation is the Mal London Lasting Finish 25 Hour Con Comfort Serum foundation and it's got FPF 20 in and my moisturizer has already got FPF 15 in it so it's really great and um, it's a full coverage foundation skin perfecting and it's, I'm in the shade 100 ivory so I just put two pumps so one two and I kind of like just like knock my hand a little bit so it all settles uh, and I have been loving um, a brush at the moment to apply my foundation um, so I love actually at the moment using the Real Techniques buffing brush. Um, this is just this is the same. This, obviously, I got it. Luckily, I got this brush in the old packaging. Not well, not luckily. It's like luckily I got the set. Um, these are genuine. And I just apply it all over my face, buffing it into my skin. And I I don't know how many layers I do. It just depends on. Um, if I think I have enough, if I think, if I think you know, my skin, depending on how good my skin is that day. Uh, and I think for drugstore, this is very full coverage for drugstore foundation. And um, not like I'm picking on foundation or putting uh, drugstore down because I use a drugstore a lot more than high end as such a young, you know, person. Um, but. And my bandana is coming down. I have to go like that. Um, but I think if you compared this to a, I should say, a high end um, full coverage foundation, then this would not be full coverage. But for drugstore, this is full coverage. So if you're comparing this to, if you were comparing this to other drugstore foundations you you could agree and say yes it is it is what it says it is a full coverage foundation but if you're comparing it to a high end you would probably say it's not such a true foundation so the next foundation i'm using is the kat von d lock it foundation and i ordered mine online so i got the wrong shade i will be open about that i think i got like a two pinky toned 
foundation. So I just do one tiny pump and I grab the little dots and I just go on my finger like this. And I start to just like apply it around, like just do dots like this. And you can see that. I just do little like, you know, I just apply it into like areas where I have like sorts of that you do for the concealer. Uh, you have to sort of, I have to sort of act fast after I apply this foundation just because um, I feel like it's quite like a thick foundation so it will um, dry quite like patchy if I don't pop it in within a certain amount of time. Um, I do love this foundation now. I think it'd be good if I get it as like a proper, you know, colour next time though. So as you can see my nose, I'm having a bit of trouble to blend my nose. It's starting to dry. But when you have a bit of persuasion it does it. I think this is a really like full coverage foundation. And it kind of like suits me. It works with the, the foundation because I think my other, I put more of my drugstore foundation on than I put my high end. Which means like it doesn't change the colour of um, the original foundation. Which means it still matches my skin. Which I'm so thankful for. Um, so I'm just going to package this way. I'm going to move on to the best part of makeup. I think one of the best parts of makeup. Now for concealer, I've only been using one concealer recently. And it's been doing the job for me um, absolutely perfectly. And this is the MAC Pro Longwear Concealer. And I am in the shade NC15. If any of you want to know. And I hate that these pumps. They pump out too much no matter how much you like try. To get the perf to get the pea sized amount, you have to go keep you have to go on your thumb like that. And you have to go pump it up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. But until like about a pea sized amount comes out, because otherwise it will just like chunk out a whole load of you guys. And this looks so much darker than my skin tone. It comes out super light. Which you'll love. And I just do one, two, three, four, five. I do five dots on each eye. One Two, oh, two, three, four, five, five, and I do some swipe down my nose, swipe down the nose, on the chin. I do it in all my normal problems. Um, here, and obviously, almost certainly, the um forehead. I'm trying to get a bit off the eyes because I put a lot on the eyes. Um, I'm not saying that's a bad thing, some people want like full ass coverage on there on the eyes, but I mean I think I just put like a dollop on there by accident. Take some off the nose, cover the redness, and then I switch over to a booty blender and I blend all that out. Now to set um, my under eyes, I just take some of the Technique, it's Technic really, but Technique Colour Fix Press Powder Contour Palette, but I don't really use it for the contour. I use this one of the lighter shades here, which I'm running out of, and I just use it on a Royal Enhanced Foundation Brush, and I just brush it under my eye, making sure I get in all the crevices, and just set all the concealer, because... Surprisingly for a super 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 drugstore um, brand this set My face girl it sets it and I'm just gonna like briefly brush over the rest of my face with the powder And obviously I'm going to take that down the neck That's that powder To more set the eyes I guess you could say I use the Technique or Technique same brand um, Soft Focus Transparent Loose Powder and I add um, a bit of um, baby powder or talc um, into that. Um, so I'm currently got two pots of this, and this part has got the talc in it. And then I have this, and I pat some on the on the top of the lid because a little like thing that's supposed to pull out the amount of powder that you want doesn't work. And um, so I got that, and I just get a random. This is like a, just a cheap brush, but it's so good. I use this for blusher and set in my face. And I dab a bit like this, tap off the excess, and just brush. Over my face again, setting in all the crevices, making sure it's properly set because you know you want to make sure that it'll last all day. 
and then um, the fact that I've put a moisturiser on the faces I make when I do my makeup um, the faces anyone makes when they do their makeup um, the good thing, the key thing about putting moisturiser on is that it doesn't ruin your spots like I don't, I do not want to jinx jinx, I do not want to jinx my what? I don't want to jinx myself now when I say this but so I'm going to try and be careful by the way I word it but my skin um, seems to be clearing up and all the acne seems to be going away and in my 14 years of life, yes even as a baby I had spots, not necessarily acne spots or like you know hormonal spots but like just spots in general, my face has never been completely clear um, and I'm actually like it's starting to go com become cl completely clear or my spots are starting to shrink I will soon have complete and as a clear skin and I've never done that in the 14 years of my life um, so I have to put my moisturiser down or else it will just like make all my spots come back again and I try not to wear my makeup too for too long nowadays so let's move on to the next powder yes I have three sets of powders just want to keep it all lock and loaded girl um, for the next powder I'm going to be taking some of the Ramel London Stay Matte Long Lasting Press Powder in the shade 004 which is Sandstorm and I'm just going to be taking a Royal Enhance Powder Brush and I'm literally just going to put some on, tap off the excess and just briefly like lightly like so like I'm literally going to that lightly dust my face because A I don't want to um I have too much powder to my face and also because this is actually a pigmented powder this is not transparent this is not transparent so it actually does have some color in it so i don't want to make my face too orange so like that next we move on to what do i want to move on to next i think i'm going to move on to the bronzer the bronzer i'm going to be taking the tiny burrs cosmetics peachy glow palette and I don't know if I use the tiny bar, like, they look slightly different. Like yesterday, I'm going to have the looks that I used yesterday, and the bronzers are quite similar, but I think one of them is like more lighter colour. I think I used this bronzer yesterday, I'm not sure, so I'm just going to be using that bronzer. Um, I'm just going to take basically the tiny bar cosmetics rosy flush secret, and I'm taking the beach bronzer in that palette. And I'm taking it on um, a Real Techniques contour brush. So I'm just going to swirl my top of the excess. I'm taking it, I'm taking my time because I don't have a light hand so I like to make sure they're properly full on bronze and that looks very orange in the light it's, I'm using my natural light so you have to excuse me but it doesn't look as orange as it does on camera than it does in real life I'm facing my mirror now and it looks completely fine Again. I'm just going to take a very light hand and try and relax, like try not to get any wrinkles up here and relax and just like blend out some of this powder. And then take a pat the excess and do the same on the other side of the face. And then the, the jawline. Let's get that sharp jawline. And I also take some and do the neck because you want a bronzed neck. Like that. And also, I will admit I've just, um, like put too much on this temple so I'm just gonna bronze blush um put them out like they're down. And the start doesn't seem to be working for you, just a tip is to go back in some pressed powder and just like lightly dust over the top and it'll ease up the contour. Contour. <laughs> contour. So as you can see I'm just easing that up now. And I'll be right with you. Do a bit of contour on um, my nose like that and it does look really orange on camera but I assure you that I did this look the other day I definitely I double check with my mom I always check with like my mom and you know women that I am inspired by <laughs> If it looks okay and she said it looked fine so it doesn't look orange I assure you um, next I take um, the same brush that I used for the transparent loose powder by technique the focus one and I use it for just going in with the again with the same palette that I used for the bronzer and going in with the blush in pretty peony 
and I go so light with these blushes because, girl, they're pigmented. And I just very lightly And I make it so the blush is obvious that it's there, but not too obvious that it looks like, like I would look like a clown. And then I'm going to go in with her other palette, so the Tanya Burt, that's the Floyd Android, um, the other palette, which is Pretty Glow, Peachy Glow I mean, and I'm going in with her, with her other blush here called Apricot Flush. And this one's more pigmented than uh, the last one, so you be careful, and I'm going to take some on the brush and just go over lightly, more lightly now because you already put a lot of purple down for the last one and um, peachy that up a little bit and then I'm going to dust off the brush and just trying to blend, like, buff it all out and buff it all out so I don't look too um, clowny <laughs> like that and now for the highlight let's go now, first of time I've been loving these two combination of highlights so I'm taking the Revolution Makeup Revolution London Highlighting Palette in the um, palette called Highlight um, this has three pretty, very pretty shades in it and it has these three and I take this one right here come on natural light this one here on the same one that I use to set my under eyes uh, the Royal Enhanced Foundation Brush and I just swirl it in there and I start to Girl, you go that one. And I take it all the way around here on the temples above the brow bone, um, under the brow bone, and then I repeat it on the other side. I always feel like it's one side that doesn't seem to glow. Like, I want to apply highlight as much as the other one, and then I do it on the no the, my nose. Keep it there, and then I do to do I just slightly dust it over my forehead and chin, like that. And then I go in with my Mac Soft and Gentle. It's just perfect for this time of year. It's so like such a print, a pinky like sort of champagne colour. And I go over the top of the previous highlight again in the exact same places. Cheekbones, um, above the brow bone, just slightly less this time. Under the brow bone, nose, cupid's bow dust slightly over the forehead and chin and also now I feel like I'm going a little more than I did yesterday um, so I'm just going to like slowly like try and like pat that down a bit like that and that is the face complete now for brows um, I've only been loving really one thing recently and this is the price <laughs> precisely my brow pencil by benefit in the shade and I'm in the shade number three um, so first of all, I start by spooling my brows in the right, in the, all the hairs in the right place. I'm just gonna like go up a little bit like that, and I do my brows. Now, sometimes what I like about this pencil is that you can you can go very very like ham and dramatic and build up a full on like dramatic shape, or you can make it just like they look like they're filled in. No, but you want them naturally shaped and just like normal, just a bit more with a bit more colour. And I go in between that. I make sure there's a shape with this look. I make sure there's a shape, um, but it's still not my natural shape. Just like slightly more defined. And I also lighten up on the hands so I don't put as much colour in as I would usually with a normal. a normal pencil with my normal one and then for my brows and then I go back over the spoolie and just all brush it through
like that. Now on to my favourite bit. And then you love the yeah. one eyeshadow um, primer recently I'd like or an eyeshadow the base and this is the MAC Paint Pot in Soft Ochre which I just dropped so we will get that um, and I just take my finger for that and I just like you know swirl it if you wonder what it looks like it looks like this and then I just like, apply that all over my lid and it looks thick but I just blend it out and I take it up to the brow again on the opposite eye it feel, I would describe it as like a thick concealer but it doesn't have the properties of concealer like it hides all the natural colour and all the veins and stuff on your eyes but it doesn't like like it's not meant for that it's meant for holding eyeshadow and stuff then I go in with my eyeshadow now these are, there's many Morphe palettes so can you guess which palette I'm using? You probably can't because they do a natural glow palette, which lots of people usually use for summertime. Um, but the palette I'm using is the 35F, which is the 35 Fall Into Frost palette. Let's open this big. This yeah. is my Morphe palette. I have three. I have the 35OM, the 35OS, and the 35F. This is what it looks like. I hope like the natural lighting is catching all these shimmers and the beautiful colours of this. But this is my palette. It's a little destroyed. It's got little lines on it and stuff. And it was broken. I'm, I was so upset. I cried. I genuinely cried. I'm such a mop. Um, so to, the first shade I went in with this shade here, which is like a really nice lighty orange shade. Uh, well, they call it the base eyeshadow brush. But if you find it for a long time, you know I just call this the crease brush because it, it should be more of a crease brush. And I just get from my brush, tap off all the excess, and I start in the just back and forth in the crease in light motions. I'm using no tape, no nothing. Across the whole entire crease. It's so on the other side, other eye. And I have to take my time with the eyes because it's where I can most likely muck up, but it's also where I could do the best. Next, I went in with a slightly darker colour, so I went in with this colour. And again, um, Touch the excess and applied it to the crease. So I'm building up that colour. Like that. And obviously, what you did to one eye, you have to do the other. Keeping that light hand, but making sure there's enough pigment on there. Like that. Now the next shade I'm taking is this shade. So I went this shade, this shade, now this shade. And I think I started to um, just do the outside of my eyes in this bit here and took it down the, the inner V and put it deep into the face. And then to blend that out. Trying to keep it light handed and just like a shadowed effect. And obviously I repeated it on the other. Like the tuck of your crease. I went in with this shade here. So we're going towards a dark shade, this one here. Um, and the darker I got with the shade, the less I put on the brush. But still tucked off the excess. So I'm just going to tuck into that little bit. Trying to keep my eyes um, pretty um, calm and like not irritate my eyes, just keep my eyes at like a normal point, like that. And I'm just going to blend all that out because, oh, let's see. When in doubt, you have to blend it out. And now we move straight on to. Do you guys thought I was going to mean I meant move on to another step? Ah! No, I meant um, we're going to skip. So we went from that one. To that one, to that one, to that one. Straight away to that one. And we want to dip into um, the Real Techniques Accent Brush. And we just want to dip on slightly like this. And we want to make a line, so. Oh. 
into the top I'm just doing one solid line like that just look like a line and now this is where our blending comes into play because what I then do is I get the real techniques the looks blending crease brush is the really big one that I don't think should be classed as a crease brush and start to buff it out and I apply forceful pressure to blend this out not because the hard blend but just because I want it to merge into the browns to create like a nice shadowy effect Until you're satisfied with it. So I'll do that. I'm both finished um, shading eye. And now we move on to sparkle. Again, using the 35 a flat brush like this, which is the one I used yesterday. And then I apply some famous MAC Vix Plus. So just spray it twice. Blow it a minute from in the air and then I take this shade mixed with what did I mix it with oh no I didn't mix it with anything I just grabbed this shade first of all so we just grab some on the on a brush. And you don't need that much because look, look at the pigmentation on this brush. And then I start to apply that on the lid of I just apply it on the lid all the way across and then I go in with a second layer next I'm going to be um, then applying a lighter goldish shimmer colour it's got brown hints in it, which is just the one the original colour is, and I'm going to go with this one. And I'm only doing a light layer over the top of the eye. I'm going to make sure that's all merging together. Like that. And now it's time for the inner corners. Inner corners, I still don't merge away from the palette. I'm t I take I took I took uh, this shade here. It's like a goldeny sandy colour. On this kind of brush, which is from W7, which is just like a stubby brush. And I do it very lightly. And I put it to the inner corners of my eyes. And there. I didn't think that was enough inner corner highlight and that pigmented. So I took the lightest piercing white shade. Again, stubbed some on the brush. And went over the top, which brightened it up and gave it much more of an oomph effect. I also put that in the bra in the highest points of my brow bone. 
just to add in some shine. And now we're on to the mascara lips, lip liner, and then we are complete. Oh, I've been having a new favourite recently, which is very shocking for me because I've always, always gone in for my falsies push-up drama in the Think House. Um, but I fell in love with this that my auntie just gave me out of a whim. And we just cleaned some stuff away, and I've literally loved it. It's called Great Lash by Maybelline. I think it's like as old as time, and um, it's in the shade Blackest of Black. And just like, look at the difference. This is like after I will show you what the difference is after one coat. Like, I like it just because it emphasizes my real lashes. Um, it really like, and it like it doesn't clump up. It only clumps up a few lashes. Um, which is better than most uh, mascaras. It's very um, volumizing, so that means um, <sighs> volumizes and lengthens, which I don't need much of lengthening because I have quite, I have very very long lashes. But look at the difference after one coat. I hope you can tell the difference. Um, so now I'm just like going, let me just separate them, and then I'm going to go with the second coat for the top lashes. And they only go in with one coat of the bottom lashes, so. Like that. And then I repeat on the other eye. I have see two coats top. Now for my lips, I have already um, primed my lips in some sort of way using the Carmax Cherry Scented Lip Balm and that's very moisturising for me. And then first of all, I'm going to go in with a Tanya Burr Lip Gloss, it's all rubbed off but it's in the shade Lunch Date. I love this so much. And I have two, I put two... Uh, And I, when I first applied this, when I was going on my day, and I, when I was going on my trip out the other day, I applied it and I did not like it on its own because I think for this look, I personally think that this on its own is just too much of a pink a light paley pink lip gloss and i think it just washes out washes out makes me look washed out um let's look i feel like it's too lighty pink and it doesn't go on its own so then once i you know like or even that out. I went in with I went over with some Mac Velvet Teddy. Now I know this like contradicts the Velvet Teddy because Velvet Teddy is supposed to be a matte lipstick, but I only did it to add the col add some color like. To add some Velvet Teddy color to the lip gloss, and it does. And I do think it ruins the lip. Obviously, the purpose of the lipstick a bit because the lip gloss then gets. St stuck on the top of the lipstick and then makes it not matte but I just get a dry tissue and just like pats off all the lip gloss and it doesn't ruin the lipstick it takes some lipstick away just like the top half of the lipstick but then it keeps it matte again and to some people that may look it may look like it hasn't added anything to it but personally I think it has added some some slight velvet teddy color which makes it more of like a brownie pinky tone which is what I'm more looking for um, and I wanted to go for a gloss because I don't always, I mostly just wear lipsticks all the time. Nowadays I never wear a gloss. I don't even really like glasses. So the fact that I've had a glass that I like, I am a really appreciative of, I don't even know if that's the word, appreciative? I think that's not the word, I'm just going to look. Do not like appreciate that mascara. Okay. And then I set with some of my favourite spray which is the Urban Decay All Nighter Spray and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do that off camera just because this video has been rambling on so much um, but thank you for watching this video hope I inspired you to do this look and I hope that um, you can use this look when you go out somewhere sorry boys you know some boys obviously 
love makeup, use makeup, and that is nothing to be ashamed of. Um, I'm just saying, like, it's genuinely just a makeup look for anyone to enjoy. So thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!